Barclays Center with Jay Calderon Boxing Talk. You already know what it is. Best heavyweight in the world. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Calderon, Stan Klee Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing talk. We're going to do a recap on some of the fights that took place this past weekend, and we're going to talk about the upcoming fight this Saturday. But first up, in Belfast, Ireland, we have the former heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, make his second comeback fight against Italy's Francisco Pianella. And this was a fight where Tyson Fury was just basically getting the work that he needed to get done and get past this fight for the bigger fight down the road against Deontay Wilder, which was ringside for this fight because they were going to announce their fight for November in Las Vegas right after the fight was over with Pianella. Now, Tyson Fury wasn't that much impressive. He did the job that he needed to do. He went in there, he worked on his stuff. He had his jab going very nicely. He was working a lot to the body. He's a very big man. This guy stands at 6'9", very tall, and he was doing some very good body punching in this fight. And I gotta give my hats off to Tyson Fury. You know, he's coming off a two and a half year layoff. This man went to Germany to take on Vladimir Glitchko, who was the king of the heavyweight division for over 10 years. And he beat Vladimir Glitchko in a very boring performance. One of the most boring heavyweight championship fights that I've ever seen. And this fight right here showed that Tyson Fury, once again, is not an exciting fighter. He's very entertaining outside of the ring. He's great for promoting promoting fights, but when he's in that ring, he's a very boring boxer. You know, he has some good footwork for a very big man. He was moving in that ring very nicely, setting up his jab, working the body very well. He cruised to a decision victory. There was really no threat in this fight. You know, he got the work that he needed to do, make sure that the ring rust was off. He came in 18 pounds lighter than his last fight when he took on a cruiserweight. This time he took on an actual heavyweight and he looked in great shape. He came in in 258 pounds and he showed that he had the stamina throughout the whole fight. So you got to tip your hats off to Tyson Fury for coming back after facing drug addiction, alcoholism, and also mental illness. And after a long layoff of over two and a half years, you know, he's back in the ring. He's getting into the shape that he needs to get into. I still believe he needs at least two more solid fights against big men in the heavyweight division to really test himself and really get ready for a guy like Deontay Wilder. I don't think he's ready for Deontay Wilder just yet. You know, it's going to be a fight where he's coming to the United States and you got to give him also a lot of respect for that to come over here. Something that Anthony Joshua did not want to do. Joshua wanted to fight in his backyard and Joshua has a very big risky fight coming up against Alexander Povekian. That is a much more dangerous fight for Joshua than Deontay Wilder taking on Tyson Fury because Fury, even though he's a big man, he boxes well, he moves very well in the ring. You know, he's not that exciting. He's not a big knockout puncher. He doesn't have the power that Anthony Joshua has or Deontay Wilder has. Wilder is perhaps the most devastating puncher in this era right now of heavyweight boxing. And Deontay Wilder, he's not a great boxer. He has clumsy footwork, he has a good solid jab because he's a big man. He stands at 6'7", and he has tremendous knockout power, and Fury has hit the canvas before. It's going to be an interesting fight, a very big mega fight here in the United States. I believe they're going to try to put it on pay-per-view. It's going to go down in Las Vegas in November, but I know a lot of fans, including myself, are going to tune into this fight because we're expecting Deontay Wilder to look good in this fight and to be able to knock Tyson Fury out once they get into the square circle. The fight is official now. They made the announcement, and I can't wait for this fight to take place. This fight right here is just going to make Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua much bigger because these are two big fights, just like they had in their previous fights when Joshua took on Joseph Parker and Deontay Wilder took on Luis Ortiz. Those were big fights, and they passed the test, and now they're going to have two fights in front of them where Joshua has a much stiffer test than Deontay Wilder, but it's a tricky fight, but we have to see if Tyson Fury is going to come in much better shape, and let's see if he has a game plan where he's going to have to outbox Deontay Wilder for 12 rounds because he's not winning in a knockout because he doesn't have the punching power, and Deontay Wilder has one of the best chins in the heavyweight division. We saw when he got rocked by Luis Ortiz that Ortiz, who is a devastating puncher, could not take him out. 
And now he's going to be facing a guy like Tyson Fury, who's not a big puncher. So he has to win a 12th round decision here in the United States and outbox Deontay Wilder. Is that possible? I believe so. It could happen. But I don't think Tyson Fury is the one to make it happen. So we're going to have to see how this fight plays out. But I can't wait. It's a great fight. Congratulations, Deontay Wilder, for getting the big fight opportunity that he's been waiting for. And this is it right here. Fighting the lineal heavyweight champion of the world and getting one step closer to the real super fight that we're all waiting for, the Anthony Joshua fight. Let's hope he gets past Povekian because that's not a guaranteed win. Now, also on that card, the main event of the evening was the Jackal, Carl Frampton, in his hometown with a about 25,000 fans in attendance in a stadium and they were there to cheer on their hometown hero and Carl Frampton went up against a undefeated up-and-coming fighter and Luke Jackson which this guy found out real quickly that there is levels to this game right here and Carl Frampton is one of the best 126 pounders in the featherweight division and he's a former two division world champion and he put on a great display he showed the quickness the great footwork and he showed excellent body punching when he was delivering those shots to deliver and he put down Luke Jackson and he finished his man off because the corner threw in the towel and said enough is enough because he was taking a lot of punishment in this fight and Carl Frampton looks to move on to bigger and better things. He is still the mandatory for WBO featherweight champion Oscar Valdez. And that's a fight right there that he could take easily. But I believe he's waiting for a bigger matchup. He wants the Leo Santa Cruz fight more than anything. That's the third fight that he hopes to get. But one thing is for sure, Leo Santa Cruz will not come to Belfast and take on Carl Frampton in his backyard. Even though Frampton went twice to the United States, once as the challenger and once as the champion after he beat Leo Santa Cruz the first time. He still went to the United States to defend that title. And Leo Santa Cruz will not be the one to come over to the UK to try to defend his title against Carl Frampton in a third fight. I believe Frampton, if he gets the opportunity, will beat a guy like Leo Santa Cruz. I think Carl Frampton is the second best featherweight in the division right behind Gary Russell Jr. Another reason why that fight will not happen with Leo Santa Cruz right away or even next is because Leo Santa Cruz is in negotiations right now with Gary Russell Jr. for a unification match. That's a much bigger fight here in the United States. That's a great fight between the top featherweights in the division and it's a fight that I can't wait to see because Leo Santa Cruz is going to have to prove that he is the number one guy by beating Gary Russell Jr., which I believe is the number one featherweight in the world. And then maybe we could possibly see the third fight between Frampton and Leo Santa Cruz, and we could settle the score of who is the true number one guy in the division of 126 pounds. So what else is out there for Carl Frampton to take? There's a big fight on the table, which I most definitely believe is going to be next, and that's against IBF featherweight champion, newly crowned champion, which is Josh Warrington. That's a fight matchup where it's going to sell a lot of tickets over there in the UK. It's an easy fight to make because of the promoter Frank Warren involvement in making that fight happen. It's an opportunity where I see Carl Frampton winning that IBF title and beating a guy like Josh Warrington. You know, it's going to be a tough fight, but I believe Jackal will snatch that title and he'll have a bigger bargaining chip when he has that strap around his waist so that he can come here to the United States and perhaps get the big fight against one of these champions that are out there. Now, moving over to the United States, we have the heavyweight showdown when Philadelphia fighter Brian Jennings took on big Russian 6'7", Alexander Dimitenko. And this fight right here started out with Jennings looking very good in the early rounds. He was boxing beautifully, using the jab, setting up his shots, and he got caught. Dimitenko is a very big heavyweight. And in the heavyweight division, one punch can change the fight around. And in this fight right here, Jennings had to climb off the deck and get right back into the fight. He was facing a guy like Dimitenko that was having that long jab and keeping him at distance. But Dimitenko is a slow fighter, and he wasn't throwing a lot of punches in this fight. So Jennings was able to pick off his shots, was able to start working that jab and really getting the quicker shots in and scoring some punches and also doing some good body work as well. And he was able to land some beautiful counters that put Dimitrenko down to the canvas and had him in bad shape. The referee waved off the fight before Dimitrenko even hit the deck and the fight was all over. Great comeback 
for Brian Jennings. It was a good, solid win for Brian Jennings, but it was a little bit premature stoppage by the referee. We knew that the end was near, that Demichenko has quit before in the ring, and we know that he looked like he wanted to quit in this fight when the going gets tough. But the referee should have let it go a little bit longer, should have at least gave him an eight count before stopping the fight. But Brian Jennings, my hat's off to him. He has a good win. What's in store for him next? You know, he stays alive in the heavyweight division. Heavyweight division is thriving right now. I would love to see a fight between him and Jamel, Big Baby Miller. That's a fight that I spoke to both of them about, and they said that they would never fight each other because they're really good friends. So I don't see that fight ever happening. But another fight that's out there, Dillian White, is a great fight between Brian Jennings and him. Who knows if Brian Jennings could really prevail because Dylan White is one of the hottest heavyweights in the division right now. So I would like to see that fight. But let's move on to the upcoming fight this Saturday, August 25th, when WBO lightweight champion of the world, Raymond Beltran takes on Puerto Rico's former world champion, Jose the Sniper Pedraza. This fight right here is a very good pick em fight. It's a 50-50 fight in my book. I like Raymond Beltran a lot. I'm not a big fan of Jose Pedraza. Pedraza is a solid fighter. You know, his only loss came to Javante Davis where he looked bad in that fight. And Pedraza, you can't sleep on this guy. His style, I'm not a fan of his style, but he has a very good jab and he boxes very well. He's not a very big puncher, but he has solid power. The one that has the more punching power in this fight is Raymond Beltran. And Beltran's gonna have to get on the inside to do his damaging work. He's gonna have to work the body and he's gonna have to make it a rough and tough fight and let those hands go and try to hurt Pedraza and put him down the way Tank Davis was able to put him down. Because this is gonna be a very, very difficult fight for a guy like Raymond Beltran. If it goes 12 rounds, this fight could go either way and land in a split decision for Jose Pedraza. I wouldn't be surprised if the sniper is able to snatch that title away from Raymond Beltran and set himself up for a big fight opportunity against Vasily Lomachenko this year. Because the winner of this fight is definitely going to be next for Vasily Lomachenko, who is number one pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world by many boxing experts. I still have Terrence Crawford as my number one pound for pound fighter. But nevertheless, Vasily Lomachenko is the lineal lightweight champion of the world and the number one guy at 135 pounds. You have Mikey Garcia that's out there, but he's looking in different directions of perhaps moving up in weight to face Errol Spence. But this fight right here between Jose Pedraza and Raymond Beltran is a 50-50 fight that I believe is gonna go 12 rounds. So we're gonna have to see who comes out with the better game plan but I'm going to be rooting for the Mexican, which is Raymond Beltran, to pull out a 12th round split decision victory in this fight right here against Jose Pedraza, my Puerto Rican countryman. But I believe that Pedraza has a very good shot of pulling off the upset in this fight right here. And the winner of this fight, like I said, will be Bob Arum's choice for Vasily Lomachenko in December. But that's my final fight analysis and my recaps on the fights that took place this past weekend. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to this YouTube channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please hit that little red subscribe button. Put your email information in so you get all my notifications. Once I drop a new video, hit that like button, hit that share button, drop a comment. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, and also join the Facebook boxing group page all under the same name, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm J. Calderon, Stan Clay Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and please subscribe.